going to do a Pembroke Welsh Corgi, but guess what, folks? We are not. This exquisite creature is a bird of myself, and I'm thrilled to pieces to be able to talk with his handler and his owner. So, who are you, left to right? I'm Becky Pina. And where are you from? Uh, Bowie, Maryland. And this is the owner, and who are you, where are you from? I'm Kay Klein, and I'm from Talking Rock, Georgia. Okay, and who is this beauty? This is Enzo Bella. He's an eight-year-old Bergamaster. You are the owner of a gray... Folks, Fiat we're going to have to Sedona. pause for a minute because the announcement is... Um, it's pretty hard to compete Georgia, with that. But in the meantime, go we're going to look at this. And this is not a corded coat, people. This is a flocked coat. And we'll learn more about it just as soon as that announcement is over. So you should go immediately to your car. Enzo, you're you gorgeous. Any, any corsos in the car. Okay. Gray, Kia, Any minute now. Okay. So. Georgia license plate. Oh, we're going to just plow through, folks. Kate, <laughs> so, what's your name again? Six. Your name? Kate? Kate Klein. Kate, so I got a little bit of information from you earlier that you were interested in a Bergamiso 17 years ago. And 17 years ago, this was even less common than it is now. Yes. How did you get interested in a Bergamiso? My husband and I had always had herding dogs. And we decided to expand the search um, and began uh, researching herding dogs from other countries and came upon the Bergamasco. Very, the temperament very much appealed to us um, and the look appealed to us. Now, had you ever seen one in person before? At that, po one. At that point, no, we had not. And you came out of Old English Sheepdog, so you are aware of the herding dog mentality. Can you compare and contrast it? I know it's a little unfair, but aside from the obvious, how do the two breeds compare Old English Sheepdogs and a Bergamiso? Um, they move differently, and their herding functions are different. Okay? The Old English Sheepdog is a drover, and this dog is a tender and a petra ga gatherer so they herd differently these guys herd in the high alps and one of the requirements is that they're going to have to hop up rocky outcroppings and so they have strong forequarters strong necks and uh, the ability to herd all day um, the coat is protective it protects from wolves, it protects from elements. Um, the rustic look comes because the dog lives in the high alps with the shepherd. And, and you lead me to mention, I, I had asked earlier, as a pulley owner, I'm used to nice, even cords, but in a Bergamiso, they typically have uneven and different width cord, or excuse me, flocks. And so I was asking you, why is it that the Bergamiso's flocks are uneven, different lengths, different widths, and that leads to what you were saying, that they lived up in the Alps, and they didn't have bathtubs, right. and they were rustic, and so very much like a pulley, it is a protective coat. Exactly. Does it act as insulation as well against the elements? It certainly does. It certainly does. Um, these guys get um, naturally warm in the summer and will be looking for cool places to put their stomachs. We're going to get Enzo up so that we can hear you talk and look and an admire of him at the same time. Um, so it is also predator control and insulation. Um, is this a very agile breed? I know in the pulley. One of the reasons that we have the corded coat is because the Pooley is a very elastic dog, and if he had the kind of hair that would protect him, it would be very restrictive in his movement. Is that also true of the Bergamiso? That is also true, okay. The description in the standard is that the dog should have an elastic, easy, efficient gait. And if this stayed matted, the dog would not be able to move comfortably, etc. 
Now, Kate, there are three different kinds of hair in a Bergamisa coat. Aunt Becky, you want to, can you talk about that? So the three different types, uh, the first coat and the second coat help make the flocks, and it's uh, about, you know, away from the skin. The third coat is all this fuzz here, this goat fur, uh, uh, goat, yeah, goat fur is what it's called, and um, that makes the third coat, and we don't twist it like you do in the uh, Commodore or the Pooley. This is all natural. Oh, it's, it is in both of those two breeds, too. Oh, I've always uh -huh. been told they twist them, so, but... I can find a, what we call a newer one. He's almost nine years old, so this is a, an older coat. But here's one starting. Got it. Got it, there we go. Very cool. Uh, They're it's flat. very interesting to me how heavy each one of these flocks is, at least compared to my breed. Um, the texture is exquisite. If you are a quarter dog owner, I would I, I admire this in a pulley. Um, it's a harsh texture. It's it's not. Um, it's it's heavy. It's a, a really interesting feel. If you've ever had a wet wool sweater, as it's drying, this is almost what it feels like, and it's it's very nice. And I just smelled it, folks. There is not any odor to this dog at all. I get that all the time with a pulley, so I want to mention that that this breed does um, not smell. They do have a natural But smell. it is a, it's a sweat, sweater smell, um, isn't it's it? It's sour milk smell naturally. Okay. Um, but because he is a show dog, we do keep a regimen of um, hygiene on him. Okay. Uh, so but, um, I find it interesting that his head coat is not flocked, and we talked a little bit about that, but could you mention again what the deal is with the brushed head? Um, so you want to talk more about the head for the flocks? The head will develop flocks. The head, the head will and can develop flocks. Um, however, because there is more goat's coat on the head, um, they are often brushed out uh, for that reason. Could I get you to lift up some flocks so I can see the feet? I have the tail. Okay, there's the tail. So stretched out, it looks like that. And then can we look at a paw? His, his, his uh, flocks have been trimmed off of his paws because here on the carpeting that has right. static, uh, we found he would trip. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah. And, and folks, I'm going to show you there is a concrete floor in Meet the Breeds, and so the dogs are kind of slipping and sliding until they get to their boots, and then once they get to the boots, a lot of people have been putting down uh, rugs or, or surfaces with better traction. Becky, could I see his face? Yep. Let's... Oh, look at those eyes. Aren't they wonderful? What are the proportions on the head supposed to be? Even, even. It's half and half? Half and half. And so, what's he like to live with? <laughs> He's a goofball. He's a goofball? Oh my god, every morning he is waking up with a smile, he dances. Um, we are on a little bit of a slippery table, otherwise I would touch and he would just start dancing, dancing, dancing. Oh, he is just the happiest boy. Um, people routinely run up and hug him. Um, I do have to warn that, you know, this isn't typical of a herding breed. You don't want to just run up and hug a herding dog. Right. You want to come up and introduce properly. Uh, but he's so used to the attention that he soaks it up. Okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, he, uh, other dogs, uh, my breed are pharaoh hounds and he has considered them now part of his flock. And when they go out, he sits and he watches them in the pens and makes sure they're doing their job. And when they don't come in, when I ask the sighthounds to come in, he runs down the pen and he barks at them to get them in the house. What, so. uh, what health checks are breeders doing on this breed? What are, they, what are they looking for? Do they do hips? Do they do hips, hips, elbows? Is it a pretty sound breed? Yes. And is it a good breed for a first-time owner? I'm sorry? Is it a good breed for a first-time owner? I would say so, yes. I, um, they are very good with children, but as with any dog, you need to train them and socialize them. 
Um, he was roundly socialized in a household with three young special needs children. And so he's very bomb proof. Uh -huh. um, he's been taught that when he sees a young child, he is to lie down on the floor mm -hmm. and keep his head on the floor. And he does that. And then getting back to the, the grooming, what, at what point, I presumably they're born fuzzy and cute, and at what stage do they, the, the flocking start? Anywhere between 9 and 12 months. Um, basically, as with any breed, when they begin to blow their puppy coat, um, the dog will begin to mat, and um, it mats in sections. Um, and what you do basically is break it into um, large flocks. Um, they look pretty wild at that point because it's solid underneath and the ends stick up. And do you split them? Do you split the mats? Pardon me? Do you split the mats by hand? Yes, by hand. And then so, getting back to the fact that in this breed, the flocking is is uneven different lengths, so in a, in a pulley, we want them to be uniform, but when you are splitting the mats on this coat, do you, are you trying to do that? Are you going where nature sends you to split them, or how do you know where to divide them? You, pr you pretty much go where nature okay. sends you, okay. okay, and when you're first starting them, okay, they're much wider and much thicker. And the standard calls for a fan shape. One thing you'll notice is that they are indeed flat. Yeah. And they're thicker down here. And that would be true in, in my breed, and I, I hate to keep comparing it, but it helps me ask questions I think maybe sure. no one else might ask. These are flat cords. In my breed, they can be ribbons, they can be strings, they can be rounded, they can be flat. Are they consistently flat in the Bergamisel breed? That's part of the, yes. that is the breed type. That, that is yes. the breed yeah. type, okay. Right. So they are consistently flat, okay. Because he is an old boy, okay, these have grown down. And okay. thinned out, yeah. And, okay. and thinned out because of the weight. Some of the, uh, um, and naturally, he's had to be trimmed from the bottom up uh -huh. to keep him from tripping. Okay. And I've, this is the only color I've ever seen in a Virgo Miso. Th this one is a Merle. Okay. There is also a black, okay, which can indeed turn gray. Okay. So you can often, people can mistake the two. Folks, it is really difficult to inter No, you're fine. I'm just pointing out that when you have a breed that looks like this, they are magnets for people, and we've been fighting off people since we started. There's just so much interest in Enzo, and why not? He's just exquisite. I can't thank you enough for your time. What do you wish people would ask you about this breed that no one ever does? Well, one of the questions I get asked a lot is, does he have ears? Oh, oh okay. So, we would like to point out that yes, I've never done this under, oh, from under here, but yes, he does have ears, and yes, he does use and them. there we go. <laughs> we have ear leather. See, um, I see an ear canal, I see pink, we have ears. Yes. And they're lovely. Another, another interesting question I've been asked is, do I comb all these out oh my goodness, before yeah. I bathe them and then put or them back in? How much does he weigh without the coat? When we okay. find the zipper, we will let everybody know. <laughs> well, I've always suspected they are little suits, and while we're sleeping, they unzip and go about the house and go through our drawers and check the liquor cabinet and do all sorts of things. But you can see, folks, I'm just going to turn around to show that, that Enzo has an audience here. So. I am not going to hog him anymore. Thank you so much for your time. He's lovely, he's exquisite, and you have company, so you have all this to explain over again. <laughs> thank you so much. Say goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye, thank you. Bye-bye, thank, bye -bye. thank you.